Hello and welcome back to the Talk Toys 2022 wrap up. This is part three. If you haven't seen part one and two yet, um, go, go and watch them if you want or don't. It's fine. These are about different categories. There's no real continuation. This is just part three. Uh, oh, anyway, watch this episode, then watch one, and then watch two. Yeah, or then watch watch the 2021 version. No, no, no. So you watch this, which is the first one, then you watch part two of the 2021 version, and then you watch part one of the 2020 version. And then he can get confused and angry. It's like, why is Tim talking about this game coming out? He just nominated it for his favourite game. What is he on about? Is he okay? And then he can get angry at us in the comments. Uh, Yeah, so uh, this is the last three categories of a 2022 wrap-up. So uh, obviously Tim, Tom and Dan are joining me for this as well. Let's get straight into it. So, the first category of part three is music in 2022. As with the other parts, of course, this does not have to be music that came out in 2022. If you've just uh, discovered Johann Sebastian Bach for the first time, cool, if you want to nominate him. How's he doing these days? Anyway, uh, so, let's get right into it. So, my music nomination for this year is a band rather than an album, and, oh, well, a group, I guess, and that is Fake Type. So, uh, I've got so much to talk about for Fake Type that it, it's difficult for me to sort of streamline it, but I'll give a very, very quick thing. So, at the start of the year, uh, Inugami Korone, uh, the Dog Girl VTuber, released a song called Doggy God Street, which is a certified banger. Yeah. And I noticed in the comments, a lot of people commenting, ha, man, you can really tell Fake Type worked on this song. And I was like, I love this song. Is there... I think, uh, is there someone that, like, made this that wasn't, you know, Hololive? So it turns out it was produced by a duo called Fake Type, who are kind of an electro-swing hip-hop group, basically, uh, with vocalist uh, Topham Hat Kyo, uh, named after the Thomas the Tank Engine person. Uh, so that kind of led me down a rabbit hole of listening to the three, at the time, there's now a fourth, fake type albums, which are just a load of fun. So they are electro swing. If you're not into the genre, it's not going to change your mind into it. But there is an incredibly slickly produced, like, hip hop, uh, well, three albums, really. So Kyo's, like, rhythm is incredible, and his vocal ranges are just. In, uh, beyond he can go really low sort of really gravelly all the way up to sort of like really high and he he goes through that range within the like the matter of seconds in some songs it is fake types music is very very specific it, it's unlike a lot of other acts i've ever heard of and so i was like man this is great fake type worked with corona that's amazing and then comes the summer and I come across a little song called Fleeting Lullaby from One Piece Film Red, which is the new One Piece film, which is a song produced by Fake Type. Also happens to be the best song from that movie. So if you've not seen the One Piece Film Red, it's kind of part musical, part anime movie. Um, The music from it absolutely slaps. But they worked with the artist Ado to make Fleeting Lullaby, which is hands down the best song from that movie and again it has that fake type flair in it and i was like man this has been a crazy year fake type have produced two songs with other artists that i absolutely love along with making their own stuff and then two months ago they featured on maury calliope's new album uh which again is probably the best song from that album so hands down fake type have not only released their own album this year which is very fun i've only listened to it once or twice so I don't really have strong opinions on it yet. But not only that, they've also created three other songs with three artists that I really enjoy. Uh, it's just, they're, they're so good. Uh, and I'm very much looking forward to seeing what they do in 2023. Because it seems they're just going from strength to strength. Uh, right. Would anyone like to nominate their pick for music of 2022? Sure. Sure. So, my one's actually a song just a single song just one song just one song and it's probably going to be a quick segment on it but me and tim when we went to see men were there a little bit early and 
when you're at the cinema early, they play music. And this song came on. It was very, very 80s. And it was in a foreign language. And I was like, what is this? This bangs. So we got the app out. Uh, I forgot the name of the app. But Shazam. 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 And it's a song which I'm not going to pronounce. Madan Ye. There you go. It's called At Dawn by the Allianz. Allianz. Or Allianz. Allianz. Allianz, basically, is their name. But Ah, okay. Okay. So it's a Russian song, uh, I think from the 80s. Hmm. And it's very, like, symphy. But it has this, like, kind of haunting lyrics almost. Yeah. The, the singer really has a great voice. I heard um, it, it spawned a bit of a meme because there's a guy with sunglasses on the keyboard there, and <laughs> yeah, I've seen the video. Yeah, in the vi- he re-released the video on YouTube and it got a load of traction. I I found out later it was in a film which I need to watch called Hardcore Henry, which is oh, okay. Uh, is that where it's from? It's, okay. it's the like first person film. Yes. Um, but I heard it was in there, so maybe that's what why it was playing at the cinema. Um, I completely forgot about the song. I forgot the name. I forgot everything. And then one day, uh, I was at Tim's. Rig was over. Dan was over. I think. And the song comes on I, again. I put it on Spotify on our queue. I'd put it in the playlist. So uh, to um, to extrapolate on this, I have listened to the album where Madan Ye comes from. Uh, again, I'm mispronouncing it because I can't speak Russian. But uh, yeah, Al- Alliance. Honestly, of the one album and one or two EPs I've listened to, are a really solid '80s band. They're sort of quite I think enjoyable. This is. Um, I may have talked about this a few years ago. I don't remember, but there's a thing about. 80s music from countries that aren't in the Western world because they're really trying to like emulate mm. what happens in the West and they go a bit heavier on the synth. And it's not, it doesn't have the poppy tropes that you see in Western music at the time. Well, now we're a lot yeah. more globalized, so all music is a lot more homogenous now. I think there's differences in the in like Korea and Japan, but music's quite homogenized now. But back then it wasn't, and it was its own unique thing. And when they did try and kind of take take bits from Western music, they did they put their own spin on it. And mm. I think that is why that song is has had the traction I mean, it has. It's also you know it's in the USSR. There's certain things you. C- couldn't say so basically mm. a lot of it you have to escape through you know censorship and things like that so there's obviously will... going to be yeah. some level of that but yeah I feared that song because I was thinking oh what song is that and then when as soon as you said oh the guy in the weird shirt and the... I was like yeah I know that song it's, well, um, it's it was really good from the music video as well you watch the music video and it's like a studio recording on like what seems like a top of the pops type show in and, Russia, um, yeah, Soviet version in, yeah. in, in the USSR and everyone in the audience is like you know wearing jeans and stuff I think it's in, um, in Blick of like an age hmm. yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I, I mean I watched a show a while ago called Deutschland 83 and it was very much about a time where the USSR was opening up to the West. Yeah. And these things were coming in, like jeans. So they were very popular. So it has a kind of vibe to it as well. So, yeah, yeah. I, I won't go on about it. But that, oh, that, no, no, no. That no it's... Song of the Year for me. A no, very it's... old song at this point. <laughs> <laughs> but a, a banger nonetheless. Uh, who would like to go next with their nomination? Someone going next? 
Mine, I was going to go after Rid, but Tom got it before me because mine is uh, quite similar to Rid. It's the same uh, song. <laughs> no, sorry. No, it's not. It's not the same album. But my pick, um, this is album of the year, is the album Unalive by Maury. Hey, Calliope. yes. That woman. Uh, I mean, when I if if I said that my favorite was uh, Maury Calliope this year, you'd have to narrow it down from a very long list of albums and songs because she just. She keeps spitting them out. She keeps spitting them out, and they are all bangers. But overall, um, overall quality, I guess, of the whole album and my favourite uh, has to go to Unalive, mm. um, mainly because of the uh, song with Gura Q. It is yes. the best song on the album. It is such a banger. Um, it the whole album itself, though. Unalive, the song Unalive, and uh, I quite like the like instrumental version she put on the end as well. Yes, um, it's very comfy. It's very kind of. I like how she uses English, but also puts a bit of Japanese in as well. It's very nice. Um, it's on. It's somehow crosses the border of being on my shower playlist and my workout playlist. So <laughs> it has the kind of vibe of, I feel like I'm in an anime. I feel like I am the main character. Uh, and I feel like Mori has my back. And yeah, she's just uh, spitting out all the good tracks. Uh, and yeah, um, it, it's it, it, it is a very good album to listen to when you just want to kind of kick back and shower and all work out. And it, it it's so it, it fits into whatever you want to do. And it's very um, it's very it's you can kind of make what you want of it. That's Honestly, a really vague thing to say, but it's true. M- Maury, I yeah, if sorry, I sorry. had to uh, if I had to nominate a person of the year. I would easily say Maury because uh, if if we go but inside baseball for a second, her other job, which involves music as well, she has put out more albums and EPs and music videos, which she's animated tw- twice as well this and year. Covers. She's done plenty of covers she, as well. She has done a phenomenal amount of work. She has done the amount of work in one year that most artists do in about three to four. That woman is... And she just does not oh, stop. If, every, every month or so, they'll be like, oh, there's an EP coming out. By the way, I've done a collab with this other person. By the way, look forward to my album in three months. There's another EP coming out. It's like... I'm just on, I'm just on oh. Spotify now, and oh my God, there's so much. She, uh... And, uh, she yeah, th- there's just... And there's weird shadow drops as well. It was either start of this year or last year. Uh, one of her first albums, or like mini albums, Your Mori, which I think I nominated for 2021, possibly, or 2020. Uh, she just shadow dropped a lo fi version of Your Mori, which is completely re recorded along with uh, vocals. And That's just, nice. ju- just that was a casual drop while she was doing other things. It, it baffles me that one person is that industrious. She's a marvel. Right, uh, well, Dan, would you like to wrap up our music segment for this podcast? Oh, episode? yes. Okay. So, my favourite album of the year has to go to uh, Viagra Boys with their album Cave World. Uh, so, uh, so Viagra Boys are like a like a post-punk outfit, so, but it's, uh, calling them post-punk is kind of uh, they 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 do stuff that's different, you know. Um, and you know, with this album, it sounds like a demented version of Devo. So if you hear the Devo, like mm-hmm. whip it, you know, like that. But imagine, you know, uh, imagine it was like a depraved version of that, you know. And you got like uh, imagine uh. Or like Iggy Pop and Hank Williams, if they met, and you know, it's kind of like that. It's it's very so, but yeah. To sum up the album Cave World, what war is about, right? And it's basically I. The reason I chose this because I, you know, I, I listen to a lot of music, and the reason I chose this, I think this album encapsulates the current uh, early twenty twenties as of now, because it 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 goes into um you know uh basically like conspiracy conspiracy theorists and not the not the fun ones that think you know the 
you know uh the moon is uh, hollow the Oh, oh, the Loch Ness monster, or things like that. But it was more oh, like that's all conspiracy. There's someone on this channel who is filmed. Yeah, it. if yeah. Uh, if you want to check <laughs> out, I I went cryptid hunting earlier this year. Check that out on my channel. I found the Loch Ness monster with undeniable proof. Uh, back to that. that of that video, yeah, like freeze frame, <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, um, uh, but yeah, and and it's um, but it's like the worst parts of like uh, you know, but. You know, of people like they are, they have basically they have it goes into people who are thinking, oh, they're putting chips into the vaccines, oh, and he plays into that like a like a character almost, and and all people like on the on uh, on social media, you know, sending out hate basically on their computers but it's it's also re and it sounds all doom and gloom but it's actually really funny and uh and they poke fun at themselves like there's a song called punk rock loser and and uh, you know he's like they're trying to come off of yeah i'm a i'm a douchebag i'm really cool but when you listen to the lyrics it's like well no you know you're and that's the whole point you know basically and uh you know, and, and, but the songs are really catchy, you know, and it sounds, you know, some of them remind me of gorillas, like, um, you know, with their themes of, you know, monks and stuff like that. But it's, um, but there's, I mean, and they really like memes as well, because one of their songs is legit called Return to Monkey. <laughs> and, and, so oh, oh, and, and, it's such a catchy like like chorus that they have. It's like a chant. Leave society be a monkey. Leave society be a monkey. And it's so good. And and they got like saxophone um solos as well. And it's like really like oh, I love it. I really love it. I just you know, mm. I just wanna put it out there and and um I think you should check it out. And like like there's some like snippets as well. Like, uh, like I said, the guy is a guy who goes, "Oh, they're putting that chips in the vaccines. They're, oh, oh they're, you know, microwaves and things like that." And you know, he, like I said, he plays into a character as well, and and it's also personal songs about. I think there's one song uh, where he talks about his um, AD, ADD. Um, so, so, so a little bit of mental health here and there, uh, but um, but really, it's it's poking fun at humanity and where we are at the moment, and it's got some really, really, really subtle references to like two thousand one Space Odyssey as well, uh, like uh, uh, which if you haven't seen, go check that out. It's a hell of a good film. Um, but yeah, I think it's it's I I, I can say keep it short and sweet. It's really funny, uh, a bit dark, but funny as well and uh and you could dance to it as well so uh rock on well it seems like they cover a lot of current events and talking about current events it's time to talk about our favorite thing of 2022 so this is the most vague nomination of the podcast this is just what did you like about 2022 what happened uh it can be as personal as you want or as wide-ranging as you want um so personally, it's time to talk about the economy. Uh, no. Yay. So my favourite thing that happened this year is the fact that the uh, Pokemon card bubble has kind of burst a little bit. Uh, prices are going down, availability is going up. All of the hype beasts are realising that they can't sell their like shadowless base, uh, base set Charizard for 90 million uh, and people aren't scalping Pokemon cards nearly as much. And as a person who enjoys opening Pokemon cards, this is music to my ears. Um, the last two years... A long time coming. Yeah, I mean, the last two years have been a bit of suffering. I do specifically remember when Evolving Skies uh, came out. Tim and I shared a booster box, and by goodness, trying to track down a booster box was very difficult. I... Uh, managed to get the very last one that a local card shop was getting and I think I had to pre-order it about a month before he was even due to come in and it just wasn't fun um I mean as with 
anything that gets overly popular, really, those, you know, who are particularly into it do sort of end up suffering sometimes because suddenly everybody wants in on it and no one can. Uh, And that happened with Pokemon cards. So I'm very happy to see that you can walk in to most places now that sell Pokemon cards and you're fairly likely to buy the newest set uh, at least within like a week or two of its release. Whereas back in the dark days, uh, you were lucky if you could get a new release three months after it came out. So Yeah, I remember it being difficult to go into a shop that regularly stocked Pokemon cards and sometimes they're not having a single thing for you mm. to buy. Like they had those bloody big, like the board game type ones that nobody wants because you, you get shit out of them. Um, but if you wanted to like get a booster box or a tin or something like that... Uh, out of luck unless you pre-ordered on like online on one of the big ones like magic madhouse or chaos cards if you were looking to get them like in a high street shop it wasn't happening particularly in lockdown i think that yes. did not help the situation but yeah completely agree very happy that it seems to be popping a little bit and you don't have these single cards going for thousands of pounds when it's just not what they're worth and yeah. people the worst thing about it was the people who were doing this the people who were sculpting them had little to no interest in pokemon and that was so mm. blaringly evident like the, the fun for me comes from you know seeing the art seeing your favorite pokemon in card form and uh, and battling and using the cards as they're meant to be you know and forming decks and stuff like that um and these people were clearly just looking for the chase cards not anything that they wanted just what they knew would get the most money and then making a profit off of it which is just kind of sad nothing angered me more um for the last two years than seeing on social media all the posts like oh man i bought like three booster boxes of like evolving skies and i didn't pull the like really valuable alt art umbreon god what a waste of money i'm just gonna throw these all in the trash and it's like well honestly just give up on pokemon cards you're clearly not yeah. in it for the love of it you just, just want to be excited to see your faves isn't it just yeah exactly. excited to see art as cool but yeah, yeah. Right. you know yeah. what uh what I found interesting, I remember one set that uh, kind of signalled the popping of the bubble for me was, uh, I think they reprinted Shining Fates, mm. and I think mm. you still see them in shops. Yeah, yeah, Shining like, Fates, and back when it first came out, it was the notorious one for, if you want this, if you haven't pre-booked it like months in advance, you would get any of it. Yeah, it's uh, it, nature is healing. I think. Yeah. Uh, who wants to go next with their nomination? Um, go on. All right. I'll uh, I'll do one. Um, go on. Go on. Go on. Go on in. Go on in, mate. I I'm gonna try and tackle this one in as neutral way as possible, but um, well, no, not really. But Elon Musk taking over Twitter and making a dog's ear of it, like absolutely. This is your favorite thing of the year. Well. <laughs> It's vindicated me, I think. I think it's... I feel somewhat vindicated. It's been a bit of a bad year, right? Hmm. In general, I think. Um, I think in terms of world events, it's just... It's not been great. It's not been great. And... I think... For a lot of people, the wrong sort of people, I think... They saw Elon Musk taking over Twitter as this great moment... And within weeks, weeks, I mean, it's still an ongoing saga. He's now stepping down as, like, CEO. CEO. And someone else is going to take over. So seeing this, like, like, guy, the guy with the ego in the universe be brought down a peg, really fucking satisfying. And I don't know if that is a yeah. positive. Thing. I know what you mean. So when when you said it, I thought you meant that Elon oh, Musk no, no, it was one of your favorite things. But it's the fact that he's fucking it up is is your favorite thing. Is, 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 yes. that's what you say it means. Yes, yeah. yes, that's that's it. And I don't know where it's gonna go. <laughs> I mean, I saw a hilarious thing the other day with Mr. Beast saying, "Oh, I'll take it," and then him replying, "It's just become unhinged." to be honest. Yeah. 
some of the things they've gone through, like um, the the new way to get verified is to just pay you monthly and stuff like that. And it was a ban on like linking other social medias, but yeah. that one got overturned as soon as it yeah. got put on there. And well, one of the things that got me recently, he did that poll, should I step down, mm-hmm. to which he lost. Uh, the vote was, yes, you should step down, overwhelmingly. But Free I remember speech. Uh, Free someone speech. retweeting him saying, oh, will you, uh, maybe you should just open this to verify the users in future. He said, yeah, I think I will do that. So... <laughs> His thing there about is. free speech is very interesting. Well, I heard... I remember yeah, the thing it. with the Elon Jet account, which was... It was tweeting, basically, data that is freely available where Jets are. You can, yeah. there is a site, there's a site to check that. You can see where every plane in the world is, basically. And there was a Twitter that automated that. And he banned it. So... He was yeah. evidently not committed to what he said he was. Well, he clearly wasn't committed because it, at first off, it was all, oh, you free speech, you can do whatever you want. But then that quickly became, you can do whatever you want except for uh, impersonate Elon Musk because the amount of yeah. accounts aside tweeting yeah. out stuff that he was saying. And then he was like, oh, actually, you can't do this. It's like, well, you've already fucking gone back on your words. Yeah. So why the fuck would anyone trust a single yeah. word that he can say? Well, I heard a, uh, uh, a theory. Again, it's a conspiracy theory is that he owns Neuralink which is like a way to do with AI I believe to chip and... in your brain isn't it yeah so I think basically so. yeah. and if you if you want to work with you know want to input AI with a lot of information what has a lot of information Twitter uh, you know? I, I guess in the same way I mean... that if you want really good but, food you could go to mcdonald's yeah but well, information <laughs> is available to everyone so you wouldn't need to own twitter to get that yeah, information it's point. all it's all, all maybe, out there. maybe. Oh, also no, it seems like a too small a scope in the same sense as like man if i want an idea of art i should only use instagram it's like yeah, that's yeah, a good yeah point. you that's could a good do one, i think one more point on this as well uh the people kind of gloss over quite often is when he, he initially went out and said, I'm going to buy Twitter. He was quite committed to it. Yeah. And then he was trying to back out. Uh, yes, his, that's his true. His claim was there was too many bots on the site compared to people. But then he was took he was taken to court by the people who had Twitter at the time. And just before that concluded, he said, yes, I will buy it now. So it That's makes me think he was forced to buy it and found out it's not profitable either. So not only has he like kind of trashed his own reputation through what he said on there, he's also not got a profitable profitable yeah. venture. So yeah, in all, that's why it's my favourite thing of the year. It's gone he's, bad for him. He's quite a, an odd person, I'll be honest. His head is the word you're looking for. Absolutely yeah. deranged <laughs> All right. Uh, who wants to go next with your nomination of 2020? I'll go next because mine is much more lighthearted <laughs> than that and doesn't have any implications on uh, anything that deep. My favourite thing that happened this year is the return of Splatfests. Yes. I have missed them sorely. Um, and with the release of Splatoon 3, we have a new set of Splatfests. I always said, um, when as soon as we knew that Splatoon 3 was coming out this year and Pokemon was coming out this year, I was like, right. And then they announced that there's going to be three-way Splatfests. I was like, the perfect one to do. They need to do a Pokemon starter one, and that's exactly what they did. And um, thankfully, they, they did the right thing. It's something that's the best thing about Splatoon is having these Splatfests. Mm. It's just such a fun thing to get people together to do. It's like a community event where it's competitive without being serious. It's a, a fun way to kind of get everyone but, having fun. And yeah, it was. It, I've missed them very much. Yeah, I will say, added on from that, I think uh, they've perfected the Splatoon formula because... Uh, with these events now, it's uh, 
you instead of two teams, uh, you know, like uh, or you know, you pick ketchup or mustard. You have three, so it's yeah. also mayonnaise, hmm. something like that. So and but no, it, it. And I was thinking, oh, that'll complicate things. And but no, in a way, it it does it in a good way because uh, you know you're thinking, oh yeah, we're the winning team, and then. Um, in actuality, because they have this other mode, don't they? Where you you're in the middle, and then two other teams from the side. Yeah. Come in. yeah. Now that's um, the controversial part, because if you're in the lead, then you're in the defending state in those type of matches, and it's fucking hard to do that defending mode. It, it feels like it's like, well, you don't want to be in the lead at half time because you're gonna have to do the defending it's thing. It's like it's the equivalent to like when you play Mario Kart is. You get blue shelled, yeah. Yeah, if yeah. you're in the lead oh, all the time, you know, you kind of like, oh, I don't, you know, it's, you know, you kind of want to be second. Yeah, and yeah, then, yeah. And then towards the third, uh, uh, the final lap, you want to boost. But yeah. Right. Well, uh, Dan, do you want to give us your nomination for the best so thing at all? I, do you know, I was going to talk about celebrity culture, but I thought, no, I won't do that. I'm going to talk about something very wholesome this year, which kind of shocked me. Uh, so there's a um, there's a clothing uh, or slash uh, sports kind of brand called Patagonia, right? And they they sell really nice, comfortable uh, gear and clothes, and uh, and they can be a bit pricey, but they are like you know they last a lifetime usually, right? And um, basically, um, they've been going for 50 years. And the owner, uh, I'm probably uh, butchering his name here, Yvonne Chouinard. Uh, basically, he he has uh, done an interesting thing because he's he's basically all the the wealth that is uh, being made in Patagonia now is going to go to combat, uh, you know, climate change and you know environmental uh support which and it's like what it's like yeah uh so basically um uh i think from what they said instead of going public they kind of go in purpose and basically all the wealth that they get in is going to support the environment and um and it's kind of refreshing to see that is you do it's very rare to see something like that and and uh you know i'm kind of glad that this person's doing it and hopefully you know other kind of companies or you know follow suit because you know i i i, I do like the environment you know i do like i you know it's something i care about and i kind of want a planet that's that's kept on going really and and it's nice to see uh, people, you know, you would think, oh, like, oh, corporates, they don't care. And then this, this is a guy where, like, oh, hey, man, I'm giving my company uh, kind of for, for this purpose. And it's uh, so it's kind of great. I, I, I do hope, like, I don't know all the back, like, I, I you know, I hope they go on their word, uh, but... It's, it's something good to see and I thought it's very wholesome and and um, yeah I, I think more companies should be like this so nice. um, there I've, you go. Yeah, I've heard I've heard myself actually some stuff about Patagonia and it does sound like a very good company I know in terms of like repairing items and stuff yes it's a thing I think they either do it themselves or somewhat, or they yeah. encourage it. They encourage, so basically... Items, as you said, they're a bit more pricey, but very much you want to keep them for a very long time by maintaining them, so they do encourage that. That's really positive. Yeah, you can just turn up and then they'll be like, oh, don't worry, we'll, we'll, we can repair it, because nice. they, they generally think, you know, to just repair things, you know, and Rather than just, you know, um, you know, like mass produce clothes, because, you know, um, I get it. Not everyone can sort of like maybe afford their stuff, 
but I think it's having the right attitude to like right rather than buy lots and lots of clothes that are throw away and you know wear them once or twice I think it's getting people to think about right well get the most out of it really and you know mm. be conscious about what you know how uh, how how we do things really uh so uh so yeah i think i think it's a great example and i hope as i said others do it to help combat uh the the crisis and you know a, a, for a positive future wow nice Right, well, tone of the future. Now it's time to look forward to 2023. Or, well, the future in general, I guess. It doesn't have to specifically be 2023. But it is the final segment of the final part of the 2022 wrap-up, and that is looking forward to the future. Uh, So my nomination this year is very much something that is set to come out in 2023. Uh, I hope I haven't copied Tim's one here. My nomination is the release of Theat Rhythm Final Fantasy on the Switch. Uh, I think it's safe to say that both Tim and I are massive fans of the Theat Rhythm series. It's For those of you who don't know, it's kind of a rhythm-based RPG, if that makes sense. It's a rhythm game, but in the background are RPG elements where you know you level up your party, as you would in a Final Fantasy game, and you fight creatures and do stuff like that. And it's just an incredibly addictive kind of cycle of the game. Uh, and there's a new one coming out on the Switch with a ton of music and stuff. I have spent hundreds of hours between Theat Rhythm and Curtain Call. Tim, I think, has spent even more time than I have in the game. Don't help me. I'm not, I'm not proud of it, the amount of time I've spent on it. But, you know, it's a very addictive game. It is. Uh, and so I'm incredibly excited that a new one is coming out. I think it's like March or April next year. I'm just... I can't wait. That's 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 going to be 2023 for me. The rest of the things, I don't February. really care what happens. February. It's even go. sooner. It's February, yes. and I know that is because it's my birthday month, and it's going to be the best month ever, and I can't wait. Very nice. Uh, right, would anyone like to nominate what they're looking forward to next? I'm going to follow up, because yeah. you kind of said mine, but I was going to go more vague. My pick is going to be Final Fantasy in general. I was going to go into theatre, and we've already covered that. But obviously, we've also got Final Fantasy 16 coming Ooh, out. Yes. So that is also something that I am particularly excited about. Oh, yeah. Are you going to... Question. Are you... Well, I think it only... Are you going to get a new console for it? That is uh, definitely something I'm going to have to consider, because... I definitely want to play it. I don't have a PS5. It'll be a PS5 that I get. Um, I'm not a. I'm not an Xbox person. I'm a loyal Sonyist. Um, but it is the only thing right now that is making me consider getting a PS5. There's nothing else I can think of that's making me want to get one. But I mean, Final Fantasy is something that, like, it, it doesn't do me wrong. It, it it doesn't let me down. People have their problems with 15. I enjoyed 15. It was a good. It was a good game. Uh, I enjoyed playing through it. And 16 looks like it's going back to more fantasy roots, some like proper old school fantasy, which I like. Which I like. Yes, it's, it's yeah. much needed. It's much needed after the last couple of Final Fantasies. It's weirdly fresh, which is a weird thing to say considering it's going like old school. But it is fresh because the last few have gone in a more kind of futuristic. Um, mm. uh, play instead of the like high fantasy type thing so yeah the from the trailers that have come out it's got a cute dog in it sold um the voice acting sounds stellar uh the music sounds well it's, it's, the music's always going to be great in a final fantasy so yeah and obviously like rich said we got theater rhythm which I, I have no doubt i'll put more hours into theater rhythm than 16 but mm. hey that's just who i am nice would anyone who would like to go next with their nomination yeah we're happy to go next um, so my nomination, um, it's not confirmed, but I imagine this will happen next year, is DLC for Scarlet and Violet. Um, okay. I think it's probably very likely, obviously there's nothing about this yet, but it would make sense, uh, given the trajectory of, uh, Sword and Shield. Now, when Sword and Shield brought out their DLC, I think... There were a lot of criticisms of Sword and Shield, and then that DLC came out, 
and I feel like it washed a lot of them away. It really created a more vibrant and bigger game. Now, if they can do something half as good, well, no, something as good, I'd say, as Isle of Armor, Crown Tundra, but for Scarlet and Violet, we're looking on to a banger, because those were really good pieces of content. Mm. And I'd love to see something equivalent in the new games. So I'd imagine you'd see something in, like, Q3 of next year. I imagine we're going to get an announcement probably Q1 or Q2. Well, even if we don't have any confirmation we're getting DLC, one of the best things about the DLC was bringing back old Pokemon, and we know we're getting a considerable amount with the home update when home compatibility comes in. So even if we don't get any DLC, I think the home compatibility and bringing new old Pokemon into the mix, including the Hizuian forms from Arceus, mm. is something to look forward to in and of itself. Yeah, yeah. Just increase in the roster is always a positive thing. I think Sword and Shield became really good games as a result. Hopefully we'll see you with this. And I'm excited. And the latest news of the, today, and it's probably it's probably nothing, it's probably nothing at all, but obviously it gets people hyped, is the is the re-registration of the X and Y trademarks for the logo. What, what, nothing. An interesting one. I mean, I'm presuming they're going to have to do remake black and white first. but uh... well, well, I mean, I think the speculation is that whether it's the whole... I doubt they're going to do a whole region as DLC. That's ridiculous. As much as I'd love it, but it might be something Carlos related in as the DLC. Ah, oh, I see. Four Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. Be, because, you know, Carlos is France and the new region is Spain. Yeah. It kind of makes sense that there'd be something, but we'll see. We'll see. But hmm. the hype train is uh, come, chugging along. Come back in one year time uh, so that you can either uh, laugh in at Tom. Paris, for yeah. his crazy things, or g- give him incredible amounts of praise. Like, I can't believe it. Tom has... He predicted it. He predicted this incredible DLC that I'm now playing. And um, I mean, you know what they introduced in X and Y? Mega Evolutions. Now, if we have Mega Evolutions and Terra types at the same time, <sighs> that is going to be a absolute clusterfuck, That's... which I want to see. I yeah. want to see that. Please make it happen. It Do you would think make... that'll happen? No, I don't. I really don't. But it would be interesting if it did. They had Z moves and Megas at the same time, didn't they? I I know they could be both at the same time, could you? Yeah, I I think, well, no, you'd have to have an item on it. I guess you could with Rayquaza, technically. Um, Anything that potentially makes the Pokemon meta shake up a little bit and doesn't just rely on 20 Pokemon uh, is welcome for me. Personally, that's what I look forward Therefore. to. Uh, Dan, would you like to wrap it up by telling us what you're looking forward to next year or the year after? Or the year after? Yeah, sure, sure. Uh, I'm going to go with. Um, I was quite surprised uh, um, because I thought Tim would go for this because he loves the series. Uh, and that is, I'm looking forward to uh, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, It's been when did the Breath of the Wild came out in twenty seventeen? So it's been six years. It's been six years since the last, and and Breath of the Wild has been like it's it's one of those games where you know I I played it at the time, but looking at it retrospectively now, I think it's been massively influential. Like honestly. You wouldn't have Elden Ring if it wasn't for uh, Breath of the Wild, I think, because we did lot... the kind of open world fat, didn't it? Yes, it it um, I, I, this is the thing. Open world games have always been a thing, of course, but there's something about Breath of the Wild that uh just made it a bit put in put in an open world aspect into the Zelda series just it just made sense and it did such a incredible job and it was like also i play i i'm considering playing it again just to get excited for the the next one maybe 
but but Tears of the Kingdom, I'm just I'm excited because it looks like it's I I don't know it might be just variations on the theme, so it might just be very similar to the to Breath of the Wild, but with a new some other tricks up its sleeve, which I'm expecting. But I know I know Tears of the Kingdom is, you know. I I I have I have high hopes for it. Um, uh, I, from watching the trailer, it's it does seem like there's going to be some, um, not not just the land but air. So I don't know I don't know how that's going to work out, but um, I'm all for it and yeah, I'm excited and and nice. I I do remember I do want to say because I remember. Uh, when the uh the uh her royal highness the the queen passed away the the trailer uh was like oh no the the Zell, um the nintendo direct was cancelled right and i was like because of the event and we're all thinking oh well, I, I you know i understand but why why would you do that and then when they announced tears of the kingdom <laughs> I was thinking, mm-hmm. oh, I, mm, yeah, maybe. I'm never maybe. Clean. Well, no, uh, but, I mean, but, but... also, I, I, I'd be very thoroughly shocked if many people were like, how dare Nintendo name their game after the recent death of the Queen that happened yesterday? Well, you never know. Journalists will try and come up with anything. Well, so yes, I guess but I mean, have, but could have been a, a but ultimately, PR. possibly, yeah. but then ultimately, who listens to journalists? Especially game journalists. A lot of people. Yeah. Well, maybe. Well, it but... wouldn't be games journalists, I don't think. It would be well, journalists. Possibly. Journalists people who want to quick click off the British public who would 100% find some way to be insulted. Yeah, yeah. I guess. 100%. But... Making That's... it safe, I think, is what they were doing. And we didn't get the thing. It just came as a fucking... The day after. Yeah, yeah. After. which... It was you know... stupid, but I... still... What? I can't remember, but did someone say the sequel last year? And because I swear we've talked about it before, and we were like, "No, it's not going to come out this year." Because obviously, mm. it was meant to come out this year, wasn't it? And then it yes, they year. delayed it. They did it might have been it. brought up in last year's talk toys, but I I don't remember. Sadly, they delayed it. I'm definitely said Elden Ring, so it wasn't that. Yeah. I don't think I said it either. I think I said. I, I do you know honestly I'm glad that I get to say Breath of the uh, uh, Tears of the Kingdom because I've been saying Elden Ring for the past two <laughs> yeah, years. Yeah, it's 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 finally, something different. <laughs> finally, no. I can look forward to something. <laughs> it's looking forward to some potential DLC for Elden Ring, there. Uh, well, well, there is. Well, the, there um, there was DLC, wasn't there? The Colosseum thing is Coliseum that DLC. outdoor coming out? I can't free, remember. Uh, free DLC. Uh, but yeah. no, I haven't touched that. I I do think they are work. They are they they have said they're working on DLC for the that game. Nice. So obviously, I'm looking forward. to Time that will tell. Maybe out, but next year we'll be talking about it. Peers of the Kingdom is out on May twelfth. May twelfth. As of now, well, it might change. There yeah, you it go. Might change. That's Hopefully, a... I will have finished with the Rhythm by then. Actually, no, I won't. Well, you do put it on hiatus for like yeah, a month yeah. and then back to it, or you'd be playing it in the evenings. But yeah, well, that about wraps up the Talk Toys 2022 wrap up. Thank you guys very much for listening, and thank you, all three of you, for joining me for another year of a retrospective look at the year that has been. Uh, stay tuned in just 365 more days. The next one will, uh, the next one will be out, unless Ooh. something unforeseen or horrible happens. In which Aww. case, it won't do. Uh, I mean, any one of us could die. We could all die. Maybe the world ends. Um, like tonight, yeah. Maybe the internet is down forever. Maybe electricity stops. You know, any one of those. But yeah, thank you guys very much for watching, uh, and until next time, goodbye.